Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of a great man taking over the world. It's a red here. Whoa, sorry guys, I got a little bit too into this. Red here, coming to you live here from the tropical paradise to review the super awesome, nostalgic, classic game, Super Mario Sunshine. Yahoo! Let's go! Super Mario Sunshine came out in 2002 for Nintendo's new console at the time, the Nintendo GameCube. Oh yeah, how exciting was that? It was released six years after the Nintendo 64 masterpiece, Super Mario 64, making it the second 3D platformer under the Mario name. There was supposed to be a direct sequel to Super Mario 64 called, well, Super Mario 64 2, with possible multiplayer gameplay. It was to be released for the N64 disk drive, which was an attachable peripheral for the N64, was only released in Japan and was a commercial failure. Therefore, Super Mario 64 2 never saw the light of day. Then there was that tech demo, which I remember hearing about way back in the day, Super Mario 128. It was shown at Nintendo Space World in August of 2000 when they announced the Nintendo GameCube to display the power behind the new system as 128 Marios were running around like little bastards on the loose all at the same time, which was a pretty damn impressive showcase I'll have to say. Super Mario 128 also never came into fruition as one year later at Space World 2001, Super Mario Sunshine was unveiled as the next Mario game. I remember seeing images of this beta version in my EGM magazines back in the day and really digging the summertime look. And I was just curious about that weird water gun backpack Mario had on him named Flood. I was like, What? What is this? What is it? Flood. I ended up getting a GameCube for Christmas of 2001 as I was excited for all the new games on the horizon. I had several games before Super Mario Sunshine came out to keep me busy, like Pikmin, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 Rogue Leader, Super Smash Bros. Melee, The Amazing Resident Evil Remake, and Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem. I saw more footage of Super Mario Sunshine after E3 2002, alongside with Metroid Prime and Zelda Wind Waker, which made me even more excited excited and proud to be a GameCube owner. There was some controversy about these games at the time since Mario now had some weird water gun backpack as a big gameplay element, Metroid Prime was going to be in first person, and Zelda looked like a kitty cartoon. Some people seemed really concerned by all these changes to staple Nintendo franchises, but I gave no fucks. I thought they looked dope! Then I remember there was a playable demo of Super Mario Sunshine at my local game shop, software etc, before the game actually came out. I played the first few missions in Bianco Hills and thought the game was freaking awesome with the tropical atmosphere and colorful graphics and music. The water backpack was actually really fun to play with. I remember telling my good buddy Sile afterwards about the demo and how excited I was to get the game. I was like, dude, this freaking Mario game is awesome, like oh my god. I had already pre-ordered the game through Nintendo Power and couldn't wait until it came out. I even went back to play some Super Mario 64 cause now I was totally in the mood. I remember I couldn't really get that into Super Mario 64. I did play it in stores and at my friend Peter and Daniel's house back in the day and it was fun and all but I never really experienced what everyone else seemed to until much much later on when I started to enjoy retro games a lot more. My brother actually had an N64 and Super Mario 64 on it, but he was the type of brother who wouldn't really let me play his system without his permission. I mean, he would let me play GoldenEye with him and all, but that was mostly it. When we did get newer systems like the GameCube, he was more lenient about his N64, but by then I had difficulty playing it as it looked and felt too old, especially after already trying Super Mario Sunshine. Duh! <laughs> Unfortunately, Super Mario Sunshine came out just when school was starting, and not just any school year, it was the first year of high school. Blech. Anyway, after the first few days of school, Mario Sunshine came out and I rushed home to get to my mailbox and there it was, the package of Super Mario Sunshine bundled with the strategy guide, the Wavebird wireless controller, and a Mario Sunshine memory card from Nintendo Power, oh yeah. My brother was excited to see it too as he was a fan of Super Mario 64. I think I had to go take a dump or something so I just let my brother play the game first. When I came back into our room, he was playing the airstrip part and was swimming in the water and I remember I remember being so mesmerized by the water. Ooh, ah. The graphics and physics seemed so real as Mario moved through the waves. 
They still look great even now. I played non-stop that whole weekend and got totally sucked in and addicted to playing in that tropical world. I remember going back to school and telling my friends like Stuntman about how cool this game was and how I just wanted to get back to playing it. I finally understood what all the fuss was about with these Mario games. I finally got it. Oh boy did I get it. The story of the game is Mario, Princess Peach, good old Toadsworth, and some other Toads decide to take a nice relaxing vacation at the sun-drenched tropical paradise of Isle Delfino. While watching the travel video with the welcoming natives of the island, the Piantas, Mario gets seduced by their sexy dancing. Oh yeah. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. It was just the delicious looking seafood that got our old boy going. While Mario was entranced with evocative thoughts of pure indulgence, Princess Peach, as ditzy as she seems, was the only one to notice a shadow-like figure with the resemblance of our beloved Italian plumber. After a bit of a rough landing, the group discovers some paint-like goops spread out on the airstrip, and yet again Peach notices a Mario-like figure in the distance. The locals seem to be in distress of the situation. Mario finds the iconic water nozzle pump backpack named Flood, which stands for Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device. Ooh, so fancy. It was actually created by Professor E. Gad, the same weirdo that made Luigi's vacuum cleaning ghost catcher backpack in Luigi's Mansion. This weird, talking, glorified super soaker is eager to help Mario to clean up the goopy mess. After fighting the slimy piranha plant in the goop and restoring the airstrip, some hoss boss cops stride over and arrest old boy here. What's it gonna do? What's it gonna do? Mario then gets taken to court and we find out that some asshole pretending to be Mario has been going around and painting graffiti and dumping goopy paint all over the island. Because of the pollution, the shine sprites, which are the guardians of the island, have disappeared. And you guessed it, they think Mario did this shit and sentenced him to clean the entire island to bring back the shine sprites and restore peace to the galaxy. Whoops, wrong game. Super Mario Sunshine's core gameplay continues right where Super Mario 64 left off, but with some obvious additions. You first start in Delfino Plaza which serves as the game's hub world and has portals scattered throughout the town that take you to other locations across the island, much like the paintings in the castle of Super Mario 64. Each portal takes you to different themed levels like beaches, villages, and amusement parks. And each of these levels has several different missions you'll have to take on like exploring and scaling the level, cleaning up goop with your flood pack, fighting bosses, collecting coins, races, and a lot more. I'll explain more on the missions later. Upon completing one, you'll earn one of those big, bright, delights and beautiful shines just like the stars in Super Mario 64 and in the Galaxy games and also the power moons in Super Mario Odyssey. And it's oh so satisfying earning and collecting these glistening goodies. As you beat more missions and collect more shines, more portals to new levels open up, and then you rinse and repeat. Pun intended. This is a 3D platformer, so of course you're going to be jumping around a lot. I mean, Mario was originally called Jumpman for Christ's sakes. Mario controls almost just like he did in 64, the left analog stick to move, A button to jump. You can time your landings from each consecutive jump to jump again where your second and third jumps will be higher than the first, just like in 64. It's the classic triple jump fear that's iconic to these 3D Mario games. The long jump, backflips, kicks and punches from 64 are gone here, but we do have an awesome spin jump that gives you height as well as distance. I use this move a lot. Mario still does the butt stomp, which if you press the L button while in midair, Mario will flip and do an aggressive butt stomp to the ground, which you'll need to hurt certain enemies and activate buttons or get into certain locations with. Mario still does wall jumps and you'll need this to get to some higher platforms in a quick way, as well as his reverse jump that if you're moving in a direction, you then quickly move in the opposite direction and Mario will do a nice high arc jump, which is very useful to gain some height to either land on a nearby higher platform or to just gain some height for a wall jump or whatever. He can also still do the dive move when you press the B button while running and it's fun to move quickly with this as you dive around the levels and jump out of the dive and keep going back and forth. What's really fun is if you find water on the ground or shoot some out in front of you, you can dive and slide from the water really fast across the level. This is super fun and it'll help you out when you need to get across levels super quickly, especially if you're doing a race or something. Mario's health meter is the sun-shaped thing in the top right corner. Eight hits and you are dead, son! 
You get kicked out back into the hub world if you die, and you'll have to go back through the level again. The gold coins you see throughout the level can restore Mario's health, along with gaining an extra life if you collect 50 coins. When you're swimming underwater, the health meter works similarly. The longer you're underwater, the more your health is reduced. But it will replenish if you collect gold coins, or if you just come back up for air. Oh yeah, speaking of water, I almost forgot to mention the whole new gameplay element that makes Sunshine unique. I'm talking about the Flood Water Backpack, of course. This is the thing that people will either love or hate about the game. Seriously though, I love it. Not necessarily the cleaning goop part, which isn't bad or anything, but the hover abilities it has is awesome. When you first pick up Flood, it comes with two different nozzles. One to shoot water out, like a real fireman, and the other to hover, allowing Mario to add distance and height to his jumps. You can switch between the two nozzle types with the X button. If you have the main shooting nozzle selected, you can press R to shoot water out. If you're pressing the R button down lightly, but not all the way in, you can shoot while you run around. If you press R all the way down, Mario will stop running, and then you can aim up, down, left, right with the control stick in a more precise manner. You can even do a close-up over the shoulder style aiming if you press the Y button for ULTRA SUPERIOR PRECISION! You thought Resident Evil 4 was the first to do this, huh? Ha! You thought the wrong, body! Besides hopping on your enemies, this is your main form of attacking. You'll use this to clean goop and graffiti all over the levels, douse flames, water plants, activate platforms or switches, propel you when you ride lily pads or boats, reveal hidden areas, shoot projectiles with, or kill certain enemies while only stunning others to finish with a jump or a butt stomp in good fashion. Hmm, yes of course. Or just tormenting the locals by getting them all wet and having them yell at you. You can also spin the control stick and press the R button and you'll spray water everywhere. This is pretty sweet. I actually enjoy cleaning up the goop and graffiti, strangely enough. It satisfies my OCD. Must. Clean. Everything. Nothing clean, right? Nothing clean, right? Like I was saying, the hover nozzle is really cool and helps bring all your jumps together. You also press the R button to use it. I love doing all the crazy types of jumps, spins, wall jumps, and dives all over the levels as you hover around and just mix it all together. It's really fun and addicting as you traverse the levels and it just gives you the sense of free-flowing acrobatics. I love the controls in this game. Maneuvering Mario is a freaking blast, I'm telling you guys. Oh, and this is a water pack, so there is a finite amount of water you can use from it, so keep an eye on it in the bottom right corner. You can easily refill it by holding the R button in any body of water. Later on, you unlock a few more nozzles, which are nice, but aren't quite as useful as your starter ones. You get the rocket nozzle that propels you way up to wicked heights that you won't be able to get to otherwise. Flying sky high is pretty cool, but makes you feel less versatile since you can't switch right back to your hover nozzle. You can actually only have two nozzles at once, and you'll always have to have the shooting one. I don't really like this. It'd be so much more fun if you could have them all at the same time after unlocking them. I mean, it's not a big deal or anything. The other nozzle is super sweet, but totally underutilized. The turbo nozzle propels Mario forward super fast, either on land or water. On land, it will drain your water tank super quick, but you can use it infinitely in the water, and man is it fun zooming around at blazing speeds in the ocean. Like I said, it's totally underutilized as you only use it to get a few hidden shines. The designers could have been a lot more creative with this and incorporated it into the missions more. Another aspect that seems to be underutilized is Mario's beloved companion Yoshi. You have to bring whatever fruit he's craving to his egg to make him hatch. Sometimes it's a pain to find the right fruit. I'm looking at you, hotel level. Anyway, you hop on Yoshi and the music adds more bongos to the mix. Yoshi style! You can't use Flood while on Yoshi, but instead he can jump a lot higher and longer than Mario can without Flood. And instead of shooting out water, Yoshi starts puking out juice everywhere. It's weird, gross, funny, and incredibly entertaining. I would just run around the streets of Delfino Plaza, vomiting on anyone and everything I could just for the pure sick joy of it. <laughs> Yoshi eats everything. Fruit, enemies, ghosts and shit. No wonder he pukes so much. You actually need Yoshi's puke to dissolve some weird jelly that blocks off access to certain places. That's really it. Like I said, he's completely underutilized. One of the missions you take him to puke on jelly, then go off on your own to complete the hidden level. What the hell? Where's the Yoshi love? 
The worst aspect of this game that everyone can agree on is the camera. You control it manually with the C stick or recenter it with the L button. The issue is when you're in tight quarters, the camera just starts shifting on its own. If you try to make it stay to keep the best vantage point, it'll sometimes just shift to another position that completely blinds you or messes up your jumps. This is most noticeable in the Ferris wheel mission at Pina Park. The camera tries to quote unquote help you by turning Mario into a silhouette that you can see through objects or creates a vignette effect around the foreground objects. It doesn't work too well and like I said is the worst part of the game. Not game breaking by any means at all, but it can definitely be a pain in the ass in some levels. The main enemy in the game is Shadow Mario and you'll have to kick his ass so many times as he steals Peach. I mean, who could blame him? <laughs> oh yeah! You'll also unlock Yoshi and the other nozzles by beating him. It's fun chasing after him in the levels as he jumps and hops around, just as agile as you Mario. He also tries to lick Mario for some weird reason. Come here, big boy. The tropical environments and graphical style are so memorable to me. Who could forget the awesome hub area, Delfino Plaza? Just like the castle in Mario 64, there are secrets everywhere and it's a total joy exploring and finding these scattered about. This area is so iconic. The sunny, quaint town feel, with bright blue skies, big clouds and crystal clear water, the relaxing sounds of waves coming to shore, palm trees swaying from the cool ocean breeze, the haze effect to show the tropical heat. With bell towers ringing in the distance, fruit vendors selling their goods, those guys yelling at each other all day long. The little beach area with umbrellas where you can catch some rays and catch some Z's all at the same time. The marina with small boats drifting along and the giant shine gate overlooking the town. You really get the sense of this place being a tropical paradise. I love just jumping around rooftops, then climbing up to the top of a tower to look all around. All the while, the super nostalgic tropical music of the level is playing to really get you in the mood. Ah, so good. Hanana poo poo! There's also a tunnel system underneath the town, as well as in other levels, and when you go down there, the classic underground Mario theme plays as you find coins and entrances to hidden areas, and possibly even shines in the process. Yahoo! What about Bianco Hills with the fun water slide at the beginning of the stage, cheerful music, it's tall windmills, bouncy tightropes, green hills, those goofy ass looking plants that smush against the wall when you shoot water at them, and that giant epic windmill overlooking the entire level. And who could forget that super memorable fight with Petey the Piranha as you fill his belly up with water until he has a big bulbous Audi, falls over, and you have to butt stomp him until he turns into a pile of melted shit. Well, Mario is a plumber, come to think of it. A water pump is actually a perfect accessory for a plumber, besides a plunger. <laughs> what about Rico Harbor? I'm looking for a place where sailors hang out. This level was pretty cool, seeing the ships and submarine and all the metal rafters. Although it's kind of a pain climbing those cages and kicking the cage doors, I feel like it slows the gameplay down during those parts, especially when you fall in the damn water and have to go back around again. Okay, so maybe I don't like Rico Harbor. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is cool, but not my favorite. The battle with the giant squid, Gooper Blooper. That sounds silly. That fight is pretty cool and memorable, tugging on his tentacles and shit. Oh wait, this level has blooper racing in it! Oh my god, I love the blooper racing! Surf's up, dude! Ah, uh, Gelato Beach. I always think of summertime and relaxing on the beach when I play this level. This has that perfect summer vibe and is the ideal beach level. The awesome Caribbean music jamming away as you explore the warm sands of the beach, surfboards laying around, those big shiny reflective mirrors. Remember those little plants that shoot with water and then they blast out a big shape? Or some stairs or even a sandcastle that leads to one of the many hidden levels in the game? Ah, swimming in the coral reef, looking around for red coins was just so relaxing. Okay, don't let nostalgia totally blind you now, Ren. Oh god, don't forget those damn aggressive cataquacks that chase your ass down and hurl you into the air over and over again. What about the fight with the Wiggler, probably enraged from bath salts or something? Or that frickin' sandbird who can't seem to fly straight as you try your best to stay on and collect those damn coins? Don't let that peaceful music fool you with this one. This has to be where Shadow the Colossus got their inspiration. It just has to! Oh yeah, anyone in the mood for watermelons? 
How about pushing a gigantic watermelon down a hill and over to a cabana bar to win the biggest watermelon competition as a bunch of cataquacks chase after you and then continually pop Mario's big juicy melons. This level is just freaking awesome and all the missions are just so much fun. Talk about memories, man. Peanut Park is a cool amusement park level with fun, playful music. Seeing the pirate ships, carousel, and the ferris wheel go round and round is just great. The roller coaster missions where you shoot rockets from your flood at Mecha Bowser and also pop all those balloons were the best in this level. This place is overrun by electric Koopas everywhere! What kind of crazy evil park is this? What's cool is that you can see some of the other levels on the island from here and gives a sense that it's all connected. Fun times! Yay! <laughs> Another one of my favorite levels, Serena Beach. I love this place. That gorgeous sun setting over the horizon as you can see the silhouette of Pina Park. Ah, I can just sit right here. The music is calming and eerie at the same time as it casts an ominous atmosphere over this hotel beach resort. The first mission has you fighting a giant manta ray shadow that splits into smaller manta rays as you spray it with water. Just watch out because that thing will zap your ass if you get too close. After beating it, the hotel emerges from the goop, and this place serves as the haunted house area of the game as it's filled with booze. Not that booze, unfortunately. These booze. The helpless manager of the hotel keeps asking, or rather, should I say, expecting your help with all the following missions. What an asshat! It was really fun exploring the hotel, playing with Yoshi, going to the casino, and fighting the King Boo down below. Oh man, that damn hotel lobby secret. I lost many a men down there. Noki Bay, with the tall coral shell towers, cliffs, and giant waterfall, is the home of the little people in shells, the Nokis. This is more of a vertical level, where you'll have to do lots of wall jumps and activate paths within the walls by shooting water on the wall paintings to get higher up for certain shines. You'll also do some cool underwater levels and fight a giant eel by cleaning his teeth. I love the red coins in a bottle mission. The combination of seeing the fish swim around, the tranquil music and sound effects of Flood propelling through the water as Mario glides around through the bottle is another one of my favorite moments in this game. The last main area is Pianta Village, home of those big-nosed weirdos with little trees growing out of their heads that talk in some weird-ass gibberish. <laughs> This place is awesome because it's the only level that alternates between day and night. I really love the nighttime ones, when you climb up the giant palm trees and you can see the stars and moon out, and some of the other areas in the distance and big dark clouds floating over the ocean. It's awesome. This place has great music too. As you may have already noticed, the soundtrack to this game is utterly superb. Of course, the renowned composer Koji Kondo, who's done a bunch of the classic Nintendo game soundtracks, worked on this. I always think of the missions with the chain chomplets on the loose as you have to cool them off and sling and ricochet them into pools of water as you're trying hard not to get your own ass burned, as well as dragging the giant chain chomp to the spot to calm it down. Or trying to find and rescue the mayor as there are these stupid birds flying around shitting fiery shit everywhere. And how about that whole underside with giant mushrooms and that big scary void with wind howling? There's actually one more small section, Corona Mountain, the active volcano on the island, and you'll go there just before the fight with the last boss. It would have been cool if there was more of this volcano theme throughout the game and not just here at the end. Each level has multiple hidden levels where that bastard Shadow Mario takes your dear flood away from you and you have to play through these obstacle courses raw. No hover pack to save you this time. <laughs> You definitely feel naked without Flood here, and it sure makes things a lot harder as you have to jump around so much more precisely on these small platforms, spinning blocks, and disappearing platforms. This place feels much different from the rest of the game, and this is actually where you'll find most of the challenge. Your platforming skills will most certainly be tested here. I got pissed off from some of these places quite a bit when I was younger. 
The design of these levels are rather simple in terms of graphics, so visually speaking, it's definitely underwhelming. They play a remix of the classic Mario theme here. I do like that this game has these sections, but they are still my least favorite part. I just enjoy exploring the big, beautiful environments so much more. The interesting thing is that these levels may have been the basis and inspiration for the design of the Galaxy games with the very small worlds and planets, and outer space-like backgrounds that you navigate through. Another game possibly inspired by Super Mario Sunshine could be the now popular Splatoon games where the characters run around and shoot paint everywhere. Man, I just love acquiring the shines in this game. It feels so rewarding after you finish a mission and then you see it appear, floating and spinning and glistening. Aw oh, yeah! I would just sometimes stare at them for a while, being hypnotized by their shininess. Then getting them and seeing the fun little animation and musical jingle as Mario goes, Yahoo! You can also collect blue coins hidden throughout the game. Sometimes all you have to do is spray water in a conspicuous place and you'll find one. Or clean those M graffitis all over the place. Or bring a lady some big old bananas that she's craving and stuff them in her basket. Those are some big bananas! When you collect 10 of these coins, you can take them to the little hut where the portal to Rico Harbor is and talk to some raccoons? Wait, are you telling me these bastards have shines? The locals say they need their shines to return to the shine gate to restore peace and sunlight, right? Yet these jerks have a bunch of them stored away and are extorting you for blue coins? What in the actual fuck? Super Mario Sunshine is probably the definitive summertime game for me. Playing this while in the thick of summer on a hot as balls day, and I'm just inside drinking a cold one, and the AC is on full blast, you look outside and see everything melting, yet I'm inside, nice and cool and cozy, playing this game. It's so freaking nostalgic to me. It's a shame that this game seems to be the black sheep of the 3D Mario games, as 64, the Galaxy games, and Odyssey overshadow it. It actually sold incredibly well, as it's the third best-selling GameCube game behind Mario Kart Double Dash and Super Smash Bros. Melee, so it does have accolades in its own right. I would love to see an HD remaster or a remake on the Switch. Seeing the colors pop and the resolution so much sharper would make the game even more immersive. After this game, the series went off to do Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii, which is an incredible game as well, possibly even better than Sunshine, and was also the only game of the 3D Mario games to spawn a direct sequel, Super Mario Galaxy 2, which I thought was even better than the first! Wow! What a stunning track record of 3D Mario games! Then there's Super Mario Odyssey, which came out for the Switch and has been doing incredibly well. This game looks amazing and I really want to play it, but I don't have a Switch yet. When I get one, I'm definitely getting this game. I give Super Mario Sunshine a 9 out of 10. It's an incredible follow-up to the revolutionary Super Mario 64. The fun, colorful graphics and tropical atmosphere make this a joy to play in the summertime. Or any time, really. The platforming and control of Mario with or without Flood feels extremely fluid, tight, and satisfying. I love jumping around and exploring these awesome levels. The added gameplay with Flood makes for an interesting and unique experience that only adds to the whole theme of the game. The music is outstanding and memorable. Doing all the fun, different missions is an absolute blast as you keep collecting shines and will continually say to yourself, Okay, just one more and I'm going to sleep. It's super addicting, just like all the other 3D Mario games. While this game is very unique, it's not quite as revolutionary as Super Mario 64 and not quite as polished as the Galaxy games. Some aspects are completely underutilized, like the other nozzles and even good old Yoshi. The hidden platforming levels can be frustrating and they look drab compared to the rest of the game, making it feel more like an afterthought. The camera can certainly piss you off sometimes, but it's in no way a deal breaker. You only need around 60 shines to beat the game, but you can always go back and do more missions and collect more shines just like the other 3D games, which makes the game last a lot longer for sure. There are 120 shines total, so be sure to collect them all. Although this may not be the best 3D Mario game ever, it certainly is the most nostalgic for me, as this is where I first truly got to know the man behind the mustache. Thanks for making this game, Nintendo. I will always think of summertime when I think of this magical game. Guys, thanks for joining me on another episode where I took a look back at this super awesome nostalgia game for me. I always think it's the summertime, but I'm thinking of Super Mario Sunshine. And if you guys have played this game, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you haven't tried it out, definitely take a look at it. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. 
And also check out our Facebook and our Instagram to follow us, you know, keep up to date with us. Until next time, guys, adios. Need to put beer in here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>